Hello everyone and this is like a really simple effect because I was sort of like going through copy to points and I figured okay now let's just do something really simple with copy to points and attributes okay so uh, just to get started right? I don't have a name for this I don't know whatever like transition I guess okay so what I'm going to do is we're going to start off with I'll take uh, these three things okay so I'll do control C control V so I have a sphere and it has some normals. So it has normals and it has a UV project. So it, it has, it just has like a spherical UV. I'm going to just turn off the camera. Okay. So like you can see this, if, if I press D and I turn on uh, show UV map, so you can see that. The only thing is the UV project has to be kept to points because we're going to use this later. Okay, so uh, what I also want is, so what we want to do is pretty simple. Like what you have is like this, like this hexagon kind of a thing. And then as the ramp goes through it, it sort of transitions over to like this. Okay, so you can also like, I'm doing like these scales kind of a thing, but you can do whatever you want. And you can do this over like any kind of a geometry that you want. So you want to sort of like generate armor forming over something, you know, you can do stuff like that. Okay, so uh, to get started, I'll also pick up the, I'll also pick up this from here because it just makes life a little easier. So I'll just pick up the box. So what I have with the box is I just have like this really thin box and I did a match to size. So like I'm putting it on top. And then I'm doing a poly bevel just to sort of round off the, the tops. And then you pack it. So if, for those of you who don't know what packing is, like if you've done like Redshift or V-Ray or anything, then you make proxies, uh, a pa a pack geometry sort of like proxies. So it's it sort of, it's like when you're instancing, so it's just going to use like the original geometry and won't calculate like all of them. So it sort of saves memory. And also from, from a viewport standpoint, it goes a lot faster. Okay, so this is good. And then the last thing is like this one circle here, which I'll just pick up. This will bring in the end. It's just a simple like hexagon. Okay, so uh, to get started, the first thing I want to do is, uh, I just want to create like a gradient passing through this. So I'm not going to use UVs right now. I'll show that in the end. For now, we'll just keep it very simple. So I'll just take a float node, attribute just float. Let's call this as a fade. And all I'll do is, uh, I'll do like set always. Let's just visualize fade. Where are you? Hold on, sorry, I didn't give it a name. Yeah, fade and let's turn this on. And all I want is I'll just set it to line. And like, let's keep this to zero and yeah we'll just sort of you know start here or like the other way around yeah so we'll start here and do like alt click on both and I'll come to let's say 48 and it'll just pass through like this so we just have that so pretty simple stuff now, uh, what I want to do is I want to take this guy and it should sort of spin, you know, as it sort of forms in. So I do have normal, so I can do a copy to points just to see what we get. So I'll do a copy to points and I can just, you know, copy this. So we get that. Now, what you can also do is I'll just take a transform here. And if I rotate this in like the X axis, you'll see it, you know, do that. See, except we want it facing in like the, let's say the X axis. Are we doing X axis? How am I doing this? I think I'm in Z. Okay, doesn't matter. We can adjust that, we, we can modify it. Okay, so we have this. So in order to sort of, you know, like, let's say we have, this thing coming in what you can do is you can take an attribute just vector and we can give it uh, an up vector okay so i can just bring this in here and i can call it up 
and set this to we'll do set always I'll set a constant value of 1 in the X direction so now if I rotate this see it's sort of like you know it's doing it in X so which is good you know so what we want is like it should start like that you know where it's like folded up like this let me just let's see if we can visualize the the fade is it bringing in the fade here uh, yeah okay so we have this passing through so yeah the because of the pack it wasn't showing up so we have this passing through uh, what what I want to do is like as the gradient passes through these will sort of turn and come in this direction like that so we are starting here which is uh, 175 and then we end at we end at uh, 15 okay so that's what we want to do so the way we're going to do it is uh, the easiest way is to do it through a for each okay so I'm just going to take a for each and we're going to use uh, this fade value to control the rotation okay so I'll just take a for each so we'll take for each point and this comes in here just give this a very simple name because we'll have to sort of like type in so don't do it like for each like what is it it's default called like for each underscore begin whatever so that's too much to type so you can if you want we can just make it really small so we'll call it for b whatever okay and I can plug this in and bring this out so now the way to do it is uh, using a point function I can bring in whatever attributes lie on this side in here so uh, I can just type in point and you want to bring in like this this requires four things it requires the node then it requires which point number and then it requires the name of the attribute and if the attribute is like a float then it's zero if it's a vector then which which uh, one from the vector do you want to bring in okay so we want to do for uh, so dot dot slash for b okay that's what we want and then the point value is zero because we're bringing it from the for each uh, there is only one point that exists within the for each and then the attribute is called fade and it is a float value so that is zero and then I want to fit this so I'm going to do like a fit zero one and the range will go from uh, 170 to 17 and what that should do is see as it goes through you'll see it do that which is what we want so it gives you like these nice sort of scales and we can like turn this off like bring the pack back in again so we just have this so that's like it's pretty simple to do this okay well I don't know uh, okay we can maybe I'll make it like 11 let's try that yeah okay 11 is fine okay now along with this I also wanted to scale down so that it shouldn't be visible in the beginning and then it should come in so I'll take another float value the only problem with for each is that if you have too many points it will slow down okay but it's the easiest way rather than trying to go through like a, a warp node and then try to figure out what the math is for that you know this is easier so just it will be slow but it will be fine okay at least you won't have to like do complex quaternion nonsense okay so uh, for the p scale I'll just do set always and we're going to do remap attribute and we want to remap fade so we should just get see this thing coming in so it's pretty really easy actually like what we're doing see And then let's also give it some color so I can just take a color node and we'll do ramp from attribute fade and we can try I don't know let's try uh, two tone because I like two tone or uh, let's let's do black to orange and let's add like a value in here and we'll just this is just for viewport purposes I'm gonna take the value and make it like 8 so it's like bright let's make it bluish 8 is okay sorry it went to 88 okay 8 is too much and this one let's make it red or something 
Okay, that looks nice. So if we play across, we will get this. See, like I can make it uh, flat. See, now another thing we can do, and you will need the lab tools for this because you can sort of like, I'm going to try and blend some colors. So what I'll do is I'm just going to take another color node. And let's just say I want to give it like a little bit of random coloring. So I can just set this to uh, random. Like let's plug that in. And I think I can't, yeah, there you go. So I want to just blend these two values. So just type in blend and you'll get a uh, labs color blend. So like plug in both of these and plug that in and see, you can sort of like, you know, blend these two, but I'll set it to multiply. So what will happen is you'll just get like, when it comes through, like each scale will be like, you know, slightly randomly shaded. So it'll look nice. And if you want this to be like, you know, the fading should be like bigger or smaller or whatever, you can always just adjust the values from here. You know, like you have this guy and yeah, so I can just come in here and let's say if I just sort of, you know, like squeeze it in. So you're adding a keyframe, but see, there you go. So if you like squeeze it in, it's more, you know, and if you sort of like stretch it out, it will smoothen out a lot more. See, so you can sort of control this quite easily. Okay, so now if I want to do the other side of this, it's pretty simple. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just take, uh, I want to make like a couple of changes. So I'm going to duplicate the up vector. Okay, because if I do a copy to points, I might have to just adjust it a little. So I'll take this and that. So we have like, you know, this guy. And I think it's good. I don't think I need to adjust anything. I thought I would have to. But if you have to, like you can just duplicate the up vector and then, you know, make changes any which way you want. So yeah, I think one is good. One in X is good. So we can just bring it in from there. All right, so this is fine. And uh, what I want to do is, uh, I want to duplicate the P scale. Because what we'll do is we will flip the P scale. So I'll do this. Okay, so what will happen is like this will sort of fade out as this fades in. Now, so I can just do a merge and bring that in. Let's do it. Let's take this color and bring it in here and we will set it to P scale. Are we visualizing fade? There you go. Okay. So what you'll get is C. As this comes in, that goes out. So it actually looks pretty nice. And what you can also do is if you want this to start fading in a little bit before this happens, I can take a time shift and a time shift will allow me to just adjust this. So I'll do like, let's say if I want to shift it forward by two frames, see, so I can actually like shift it forward by, let's try like five frames. Yeah. Or I don't know, let's try seven frames. Okay. So what will happen is like this will start to fade first and then this will come in. So you can make those changes, you know, much more easily. Okay, now as a final thing, uh, let's say if you want to set this to, uh, instead of just using this, let's say I want to set it to like UVs. Okay, so how do you go about doing that? Because we do have UVs, you know. So what I can do is I can take a point warp. J just type in warp and uh, so all of these are mostly the same, like Attribute warp is like the main node because even if you take like a detail warp, it still says attribute warp up there. So all side effects is done is uh, they just taken the attribute warp and made like multiple versions where they just keep changing this. So if you want to work on vertices or points or primitives or detail, you just you can just take the attribute warp and you know change what it is going to run over. So I'm going to take this and uh, let's call it fade warp and uh, might have to do a couple of things. So I don't want all of this. I'm just gonna delete that. I'm gonna do a bind. And, or actually we might, no, screw it. Yeah, I, I don't need it. Okay, so just take a bind and I'm gonna type in UV. And this is a three float. So if I just plug this into color, you'll be able to see your UV values. There you go. Okay, now if I split this, so if I do a vector to float, I will get, you know, X and the U and V. Okay, so I can just, so this is U 
and that is V. So V is what we want because we want to go from like this to that. Okay, so what I can do is I just want to increase the range so the ramp can sort of fit in properly. Okay, so I'm going to take a ramp here. So we'll take ramp parameter, I'll call this uh, fade ramp and uh, I'll do a bind export and the bind export will be fade. Yeah. So this comes in there and in the middle what I'll do is I'll just take a fit range. So I'll take a fit range and all I'll do is I'm going to take this to minus 0 0.2 and take this to 1.2. So now you're like just increase the range of it and plug that in and get rid of this, get rid of that also, like you don't need it. So we can just and hold on, yeah, Ta change the ramp type to spline. So we can just, I can visualize fade. And we do the same thing, you know, so what I want is like, it should be like, let's flip this. So we're starting from, let me just check which side we're starting from. Oh, okay. So what we'll have to do is let's just rotate the UV project. Yeah. So let's just take a rotate and rotate it that way. So I can bring this in and so just take uh, like animate the position values of both and then we'll come to let's say 24 and I'll bring it ahead and then come to about 48 and then bring it to the end and then I'll just bypass this fade. So the result will more or less be the same like you won't see any change. We should pretty much just get Okay, it crashed. Okay, so we've gotten the result. I kind of just completely forgot where I was. But uh, yeah, so the advantage of this is like this is it'll all look the same. Except the advantage now is that uh, if we adjust the UV, the UV gizmo, we can sort of spin it around, you know, so if I just take this, and I can just so if I just press R, yeah, okay. And if you spin it, see, so I can actually like spin this around. And the only change you'll have to make is if you spin this, just because the, the up vector will be like weird. So just come into the up vector and make the required changes. So we might have to just adjust the X axis till it, yeah, there you go. See, so now it's fine. Sorry, the Y, y axis. So the advantage of setting it to UVs is that any object you have which has UVs, you can just, you know, plug that in directly and have it flow over UV. So you don't have to, you know, use anything else. You can just set it to UVs. But yeah, so even if you don't want to do this, we still have this guy back here. See now, like because the up vector is weird, the rotation is a little weird. So we'll just have to sort of go back and make this to zero again. But there you go. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is another usage of, you know, how you can do some kind of effects work with copy two points. Okay.